Congratulations on purchasing a genuine Wabasto heater. We're excited to have you with us. The Airtop 2000 STC was designed to give you more than just warmth. It will provide consistent temperature where you need it most, while saving you thousands on fuel every year. Enjoy a quieter and warmer cab without idling, while reducing fuel consumption, maintenance to your DPF and engine, and improving uptime. This video will provide an overview of installing an Airtop 2000 STC in a diesel Class 8 truck. For full instructions and installation manuals, visit techwabasto.com. We have provided a full kit of necessary items to allow easy installation of this air heater. To help with the installation, we recommend using the following tool sets. Set of combination wrenches, tongue and groove pliers, slip joint pliers, utility knife, SAE and metric socket set, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, electric or pneumatic drill, assorted drill bits, hole saw kit, including four inch hole saw, trim panel removal tools. Whether you install the heater on the interior or exterior of your truck, pay close attention to both how and where it's placed. For this installation, we'll focus on the more common interior install. Installing the heater incorrectly can cause problems for the heater or even dangerous safety issues. The first thing to know is that the heater was designed to operate independently of the truck's factory air system. It comes with specific ducting to handle the high output temperature. It must not be integrated into the truck's factory air system. The air from the heater can reach temperatures that will melt or damage the truck's HVAC system. Heaters should be installed with the fuel port pointing downward. But if it doesn't quite fit, you still need to follow these constraints. On the long axis, it's okay to rotate plus or minus 90 degrees. On the horizontal axis, you can't rotate the heater more than 90 degrees. And never allow the fuel inlet or air outlet to face upward. While the heater is running, the surface can get hot to touch and cause burns. Keep the air outlet opening at least eight inches away from all body parts. It must also be in an area with good airflow and a minimum clearance of four inches on both ends and two inches on all sides. When adding the heater to the truck, the support area must be flat, smooth, and attached directly to the floor using the supplied seal. This is very important for safety reasons and prevents exhaust gas from entering the cabin or compartment. It can compensate for uneven floors up to one millimeter thick. For gaps greater than one millimeter, you must use the optional mounting plate and foam gasket included in the kit. Each time the heater is removed, this seal must be replaced entirely. To avoid a fire hazard and create a smooth, solid surface for the heater, cut the floor out to the subfloor. This also ensures a tight seal and lets the foam act as a spacer to allow proper airflow and clearance for the ducting. Prior to making any cuts, ensure sufficient clearance on the opposite side to avoid cutting into something that shouldn't be cut. Pre-drill the required holes in the subfloor using the provided heater seal template at the back of the manual. Next, mark and pre-drill the holes for the metal mounting plate. Peel away the adhesive paper from the foam gasket and stick it to the mounting plate aligning the bolt holes. For ease of installation, we recommend attaching the seal, then the fuel line and mounting plate to the bottom of the heater. Next, Attach the combustion tube to the black port at the bottom of the heater by moving the fuel wire harness into the slit. Finally, attach the exhaust tube to the opposite port and clamp in place. Take the subassembly, thread it through the subfloor, and secure the heater to the truck using the provided bolts and nuts. You'll need an extra set of hands to help tighten the bolts. Be sure to understand the guidelines for exhaust routing and length found in the installation manual. 
In some cases, the exhaust pipe may need to be trimmed for proper positioning. Ducting is provided to run warm air into your bunk space. Here are a couple recommendations to ensure efficient airflow. Separate air inlet and outlet vents to help better maintain even temperature control. Also, make sure there are less than 270 degrees of bends total in the heated and return air ducting. Too many bends reduce airflow and will cause the heater to overheat and shut down. To connect the fuel supply system, only use a Wabasto fuel line with an inner diameter of 2 millimeters. A larger line will cause air pockets in improper fuel delivery. One good tip to save time is to run the fuel line and wire harness at the same time, since these will both run from the heater to the pump. The AirTop 2000 STC draws directly from the truck's fuel tank accessory port using the provided standpipe. Cut the standpipe at an angle and make it as long as possible while maintaining a minimum clearance of one inch from the bottom of the tank. Even though the heater uses very little fuel, this prevents it from emptying the tank completely. Additionally, a dual standpipe is available to install a Wabasto air heater and coolant heater in tandem. To stop air bubbles and leaks from forming when joining fuel lines, make sure the fuel lines touch in the coupler and tightly clamp them together. Install the fuel pump in a cool place close to the fuel source using the rubber hanger. The hanger helps keep the fuel pump quiet. Keep the pump and fuel lines away from heat coming off hot truck parts. Use a heat shield if necessary. For effective automatic bleeding, the fuel pump should be secured with the following limitations with the fuel outlet pointing upward no less than 15 degrees and rotated no more than 90 degrees on its long axis. Install the fuel filter vertically or horizontally between the tank and pump. Check to see that the direction arrow on the filter is pointing in the direction of the fuel flow. When possible, install vertically. If space does not allow, avoid rotating more than 90 degrees away from vertical. Once you connect the fuel lines, you can also connect the wire harness from the fuel pump to the main wire harness at the bottom of the heater. It is also important to add a warning near the fueling cap to remind the user to shut the heater off during refueling. With the heater assembled, ensure the combustion and exhaust tubes are in their proper position. The combustion air supply should not draw from areas occupied by people. Avoid pointing the combustion and exhaust tubes in the direction of travel or where they can be clogged with road debris as this could result in a fault. Make sure to extend the exhaust pipe past the truck body to avoid exhaust pooling under the truck. Both lines should fall away from the heater and be positioned so that the air intake isn't drawing from the exhaust. If you can't get the lines to fall away, drill a four millimeter drain hole at the lowest point to prevent moisture from building up. Power should come from the truck's batteries. Connect the heaters, positive and ground wires across all batteries. Once the battery connections are in place, remove the control unit cover to plug the main wire harness into the heater. For ease of installation, the main wire harness can be routed to either side of the heater. The Smart Temp Control 2.0 is the brain of the system. It controls the heater operation, timer, and acts as a thermostat to maintain set temperature. Install the Smart Temp Control 2.0 on a flat surface in an easy to reach visible spot. We recommend positioning it somewhere not too close or too far from the hot air outlet in order to have an evenly heated area. Before drilling any holes, make sure there is nothing behind the mounting location. Once clear, Drill two holes and secure the controller with the two supplied number four screws. Now, connect the SmartTemp wire harness to the main wiring harness. For a first time setup, 
you'll need to set the date and time on the Smart Temp Control 2.0. To manually start the system, turn the heater on with the Smart Temp Control by pressing the Wabasto button. Depending on the length of the fuel line, you might need multiple starts to prime the system. You'll hear a continuous clicking from the fuel pump as it starts to prime. Once primed, you'll hear the ignition through the exhaust pipe. As always, our team of experts are ready to answer any questions, comments, or concerns that may arise from the installation or utilization of the air heater. We're proud of our products and are always here to provide industry-leading service and support. To find your nearest Wabasto dealer or for further questions, please visit techwabasto.com, download our TechWabasto mobile app for iOS and Android, or call our technical hotline Monday through Friday at 800-860-7866 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for choosing Wabasto.